In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Our Lady, Refuge of Sinners, Saint Joseph, our patron saints and guardian angels, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Today in the Gospel and in the first reading, we have examples of two women who were caught in adultery. One was innocent and one was guilty. The innocent one, Susanna, was being framed by evil men, wicked men who wanted to force her to commit sin with her. And they... Uh, of course, uh, it has a very much reminds us of another garden and, an, and a woman without sin who listened to the evil being promoted or being suggested. And uh, of course, that's the first Eve who gave in to the evil suggestions of the serpent in a garden. But this Susanna is more like the new Eve, Our Lady, in that she... Uh, an innocent woman who doesn't listen to or doesn't give in to the suggestions or um, coercion of the evil one and uh, trusts in God who comes to her aid and uh, delivers her from the wicked, uh, wicked men through the instrumentality of Daniel, who is, of course, a type of Christ. Daniel uh, in that example, shows that God is just. God's justice is prevails in the case of Susanna. In the woman in the gospel, she was truly guilty of adultery. And in this case, our Lord shows that he is being merciful. He uh, does not exact the law on her regard mainly because of the wicked men who are also accusing her. And instead, he shows mercy to this woman caught in adultery. And it's always been said that in God, you know, his mercy is his justice, and his justice is his mercy. And we see this in these two cases where, in one case, God's justice prevails for those who are innocent. And in, and in that case, you can see the... Um, uh, two types of redemption that Blessed John Duns Scott has talked about, the preservative redemption and the liberative redemption. This first case, Susanna was preserved from falling into the hands of wicked men, and like Our Lady, who was preserved from all sin. And in the second case, the woman who was truly guilty of, re of, of the sin was liberated by God's mercy, as we have been who have been conceived in sin and have been uh, under the um, death sentence, you might say, have been freed. So in these two passages of the Bible, we see clearly that God is showing forth his justice and his mercy, and uh, he has freed all those who are guilty and he has preserved those who are innocent. Let us today, as we continue pro proceeding towards Holy Week, you know, c call to mind our Lord's great justice and mercy, that he is just, in that what he did was became man for our sake to offer himself, for both to preserve those who are innocent, meaning his mother and uh, the Immaculate, and to re redeem and liberate those who are in the, the death or in the grip of evil, uh, those who are guilty, uh, the rest of his children, from the wickedness of the evil one, who, of course, in these two passages, the Pharisees and the wicked judges are very much like the, uh, the serpent and the evil that he wants to promote amongst us. Um, let us pray especially that um, there are those today who have mercy confused uh, and justice as well, and that somehow they think that, um, you know, 
yes, our Lord did eat with sinners, but those sinners weren't advocating their sinful way of life when our Lord was eating with them. Matter of fact, we see many times the sinners were repentant and were uh, trying to uh, change their ways. And of course, in the case with the woman caught in adultery, our Lord frees her, but he tells her, go and sin no more. He didn't say, go and have a parade and exalt yourself. And this is the kind of warped mentality that we have in amongst even churches leaders who need to understand this, that this, we're, not, we're not condemning someone because we call out their sin. We're just saying that they need to change their ways. It's a kind of mercy to tell them to turn back and to sin no more. Uh, this is um, something today that needs to be clarified and made clear that um, the church has always been merciful and the church has always been an instrument of God's mercy, but it also has to call to mind and call out sin where it is. Even one of the acts of mercy is to admonish the sinner. We don't, in admonishing them, we don't condemn them, but we want them to be turn away so that they won't be condemned eternally by the just judge when he comes. And uh, this is the thing that uh, is um, most important to keep in mind as we approach Holy Week, that uh, our Lord is just and merciful. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen.